You're watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, and today's show is protected by Aura. They offer all-in-one digital safety and security with their fantastic online tool. Get your free trial started today at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link will be in the comment section, and it will be in the description of today's video. Let's get into the rumors. First up, is this Tyron Smith's last year? with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go two stars for now, but if I had to go one way or the other, I would probably lean towards yes. And the Cowboys have done things they've done in the past when it comes to contracts. For the first time in what feels like a long time, the Cowboys have not restructured what has been one of the best contracts they've ever given out. He has been incredibly cheap on that, uh, on that standpoint there. But they could have brought his cap hit down. They did not, leaving the door open for potentially moving on next year. The hope, whether it is in 2023 or in 2024 or even hopefully not this year, that Tyler Smith takes over and becomes the team's left tackle of the future. After this season, he's only got one year left under contract plus some void years. Now, in the regular season, when he was healthy, Tyron Smith played pretty well. Two sacks, four hits, five hurries, had a pretty solid... Um, PFF run rate of 90.5, he still continued to play like the good player we've seen in the past. He's been a impactful left tackle. The problem was, I think this is one of the concerns here for the Cowboys, good point to mention it on the Bobby Belt, um, Brian Broaddus podcast, he did not play well against the 49ers. He allowed a sack, two hits, and four hurries. That first group of stats was regular season only, and in one game, Tyron got beat almost as much as he did in, like, on average, five games. It was it was troubling to see Tyron struggle, plus the medical issues, always being hurt, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is a big-time red flag on that front. Hopefully, just the one thing, you know, was coming off the COVID, and that impacted most players last year for the Cowboys, outside of maybe Randy Gregor. They took a game to get healthy and, and get back to normal film there. But it is a good question mark in terms of what the future holds for Tyron Smith. He is consistently injured. He does not play every single game. He is You can count on him to miss a couple every single year. That is an issue for Dallas. And with the drafting of Tyler Smith in round one, whether it's going to be a he starts seven games, five games, three games at left tackle. I think their plan is to make him the backup at the position, which means at some point he's going to get opportunities to make his impact at left tackle. And especially if Tyler Smith balls out this year, which, fingers crossed, that's a good thing no matter what, it could allow the Cowboys to move on quicker. So I would not be surprised if this time next year, just like they did with Amari Cooper and Demarcus Lawrence, if we have that conversation on Tyron Smith. So is this Tyron's last year with the Dallas Cowboys? Make your predictions for me in the comment section. Y for yes or N for no. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break happens to come here on YouTube, perfect timing. Head down to that pin comment and type your Y or your N. Trading away Dalton Schultz. That is next up on here, and I'm going to give it the fake news. Uh, I just I don't see how it makes sense, particularly with what the Athletic actually argued from that standpoint because it was uh, confusing at best from that position. The Athletic pitched the Bucks trading for Dalton Schultz to replace Rob Gronkowski. Now, previous reports, and we're still there, the Schultz and Cowboys are not that close uh, on contract negotiations. And the Cowboys unquestionably need Dalton Schultz this year because they don't have anything going on in terms of trustworthiness and provenness at the tight end position. They, they are dangerously thin behind Schultz. If he were to get hurt, this would maybe be the worst tight end room in the entire NFL, at least bottom tier. Now, you might be wondering what the star meter means. You haven't brought this up in a while. The rumor meter explainer. Uh, this time last year, I said, ah, oh, you know what? We should probably change zero stars. It's Carson Wentz playoff wins. We don't have to anymore. He's back in the division. It's staying zero stars equals Carson Wentz playoff wins. One star, it's a small shred of truth. There's some elements here that make some sense, but... 
you know, don't, don't get your hopes up there. Two stars means people are talking it's firmly in that r rumor category. Three stars, pretty likely, not a done deal, not quite 100% done, not sold yet, but it's probably going to happen. Four stars was Zeke eating, is Zeke eating, which might need to change at some point soon, but that means it is a done deal. So here was the athletics pitch from Greg Allman, or Omen, however you pronounce his last name, I'm actually not sure. It would likely take a mid-round pick to pry Schultz away from Dallas. Remember, they let receiver Amari Cooper go to the Browns for a fourth rounder and a late round pick swap. It's amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. It's not actually every word, but I wanted to make a last Jedi quote. But it was not a fourth round pick. And trading away Dalton Schultz for a mid to late round draft pick is a horrible deal for the Cowboys. If they were rebuilding, then okay, we could have a different conversation. But this is a team, rightfully so, that views themselves as a playoff contender. The Athletic, by the way, also mentioned four years, $50 million as what it would likely cost. That was based on the Spotrack Spo extension projection. It's also not true, because if Dalton Schultz was down to sign a deal worth roughly $12.5 million a year, I could actually see Dallas getting a deal done at that point. But it's not going to cost $12.5 million. Why would Schultz take a million and a half dollars less per year than what everybody else at the tight end market now with David and Joku resetting it, stabilizing it at. So I don't see this happening with the offer, the everything behind it. This idea is just not right. So in general, what would you do with Dalton Schultz? Would you trade him knowing you know, if you get a good pick back, you got nothing at tight end? Would you pay him knowing you might be paying a good player great money? Or would you keep him for now knowing you might lose him to free agency, although it would also probably net you a comp pick that would be more than what the Athletics suggested the Bucks give up. The likely outcome is keep for now. I don't think a deal is getting done. I don't see a trade happening at all. And I think the path here is this. Dalton Schultz, who is probably going to be your number two leading receiver this year behind CeeDee Lamb with injuries at receiver, etc., Schultz has a big year. The Cowboys may or may not tag him again. It would be upwards of $12 million, almost 13 at that point. I believe that's the number. And they give time and buy time by keeping on the tag this year to see if a Jake Ferguson, to see if a Sean McEwen, or even a Jeremy Sprinkle can emerge as a viable option. Probably not so much on Sprinkle there. If they do, awesome. If not, ah, eh, you know, you could revisit the free agency and the draft market again next year. Now, today's show, like we mentioned, is made possible in part by Aura. They offer financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, and online and device security for you, up to five members of your family. I have a baby girl at home. Producer Jeremy has his dog, Sadie. And you can get your, uh, your information protected as well. Free 14-day trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link is going to be in the comment section and the description of today's video so take advantage of it it's a free trial you can cancel at any time so give it a shot there's no downside if you don't like it then just cancel it no harm no foul 14 day trial aura.com slash chat sports some more rumors here landon collins to the cowboys a couple years ago i would have been all for this i am glad the cowboys did not even try to win that bidding war because it's one star um, I don't view Collins as the guy that he was that best year in New York when he was so good, Pro Bowl, all throw caliber year. Pro Football Network labeled the biggest need for each team. And for Dallas, they picked depth anywhere on defense. And they offered a solution, too, signing Landon Collins, which is interesting. Collins did not remotely live up to his contract in Washington. And although it would continue the NFC East journey he's gone on, I don't actually know how impactful he would be for the Cowboys. A big pitch from PFN is that Collins would be able to play that kind of hybrid linebacker safety role that Keanu Neal, I'm going to say, was supposed to play. In the end, it was really J. Ron Curse who filled that. Here was PFN's pitch. Collins would fill a specific role as a hybrid safety linebacker taking the place of Keanu Neal, who signed with the Buccaneers. After spending the majority of his time in the box for Washington last year, 
Collins would have a similar job in Dallas. He'd be injury insurance for linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch and the Cowboys' safeties, and his presence would allow Micah Parsons to rush the passer more often. So it's a good pitch in terms of like filling the role. Not sure it's the most sensible for Dallas, though, because of the player. So before we go more in-depth on this, name a free agent who you guys want to sign. I'd say keep it realistic, but given that the Cowboys have signed three players all year, feels like almost any player is... Uh, not realistic for the Cowboys. So drop a name for me in the comments section. I do think a linebacker is an area of focal point, but that hybrid safety linebacker role was really filled by J. Ron Curse. He's the one who did that. Now you've got Micah Parsons and Curse both getting linebacker reps. Hopefully Jabil Cox breaks out. I would be down to go look for somebody at linebacker. I don't think safety is that big of a need. I am ex obviously curses back. Willie Hooker outplayed Demonte Casey. Donovan Wilson's still there. He's still on this team. I am excited about young guys. Marquise Bell, Israel Mukwamu. The depth at safety is better than it's been in years. And although Collins' tackle numbers might look pretty good, he can't cover anymore. He can't do it. He really struggled. Really struggled. In coverage. And frankly, a big reason why he got cut beyond the contract was he didn't want to play that hybrid linebacker role. He thought he was a safety. So I'd say pass on Landon Collins. Now, if the Cowboys actually sign somebody, we will do a video, I promise. So far, it's been James Washington and Dante Fowler an hour apart from each other, and then Ryan Nall, which was also on a different Friday. But we do Daily Cowboys videos anyway, live shows as well. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe right now. Now another free agent name that I know I already saw in the live chat is Anthony Barr. Two stars on this one. Bleacher Report predicted where all the top free agents left would sign. I am inclined to agree that I think Anthony Barr is a logical fit for the Cowboys, but they've got to actually do something before I go above two stars for any free agent ever again in this organization. There have been previous reports on Barr and the Cowboys, namely, they've got interest if the price is right, which means if he's super cheap there. Injuries have begun to, to kind of add up a little bit. Uh, for Anthony Barr, I don't think he's going to be that expensive. It is almost July. If you're available in July, you're not going to cost more, in most cases, than $6 million bucks. There are some exceptions. Maybe Odell Beckham is one of them, but I don't think Barr is that. So if you could only sign one player, and let's say the contracts were similar, who would it be? Type LC for Landon Collins, or type in AB for Anthony Barr. This is the good AB. Get your votes in for me right now in the comment section. Here was the argument from Beach Report, which I agree pretty heavily with here. LVE has a long history of ailments. Jabril Cox coming up with a torn ace to limit him to just seven games as a rookie. Devontae Bond will be out for, the, for 2022 after suffering a knee injury at OTAs, even though Bond was not going to play anyway. And Damone Clark could miss a significant chunk of his rookie campaign as he works his way back from a neck issue. While a player like Barr, who has availability concerns of his own, may inject more risk into an already shaky linebacking core, the potential of Barr returning for to two form makes the risk worth it, especially if they can get the 30-year-old on a cheap deal. The Devontae Bond part isn't really that relevant because he wasn't going to play anyway, I don't believe. But I do think linebacker is the area I go, mm, I don't trust this group right now. You've got Parsons who's going to play that, hy that hybrid role. I am excited about Jabril Cox. Even though you only tend to use two linebackers, beyond that top three of Parsons, LV, and Jabril Cox, you've got UDFAs and Story Jackson, Aaron Hansford, a former UDFA who's really played real games, and Luke Gifford, and Devin Harper, a late-round draft pick. So I would be inclined to say I would like to add Anthony Barr, but I've just got to wait and see what ends up happening in terms of the Cowboys actually doing something in free agency. Thank you.